when you run a large social network, there are well-funded information transparency opponents who, for whatever reason, misinformation, disinformation, national security, what have you, they want their information out there. Um, I got in trouble one day because I announced, why would we ever source from RT, which is Russia Today? Um, and people yelled at me at the time, Russia Today and RT after the Crimea invasions was in fact banned for precisely this reason. So you really do have to be careful about the power of misinformation at scale. The misinformer is guilty, but so are the platforms if they spread it without checking, right? And that's damaging to a democracy. It really does put democracies at threat. And this problem will only get worse. Um, there are a gazillion videos now uh, where basically, I'll give an example. You can have, have ChatGPT or equivalent generate a text. You can generate the mouth movements. You can move the face and so forth. To the average person, they're indistinguishable from real. Um, the If you look at what happened with um, Taylor Swift and the deep fakes about her, there were plenty of predict uh, systems that were trying to prevent the creation of the deep fakes, but people were so motivated to create these images that they managed to get around all of the checks and balances. So it is a war between the locks and the lock, lock pickers and lock makers, and the lock makers need to win with disinformation for the nation, frankly, for democracy. You have been involved in the inner workings of uh, U.S. national defense policy. How will AI change the business of war? Is it ultimately a, a positive right now, um, helping us be more accurate? I'll say this. It'll sound cynical, but I'll say it. I genuinely mean it. The best thing about the Western militaries is they're not at war, and so they're incredibly slow, right? There is a real war in the West, and that's in Ukraine and Russia. And I've now been many times to, to Ukraine, and I've provided some advice to them. And, and I obviously want, want a, I, I, I'm, I think that however imperfect we want to preserve democracies in our world, they're just better and safer to have democracies than autocracies. It's certainly not ones that are busy invading the na neighboring country. So what's really going on in Ukraine is a vision of what's happening in the future. You now have, and again, I, I, I can, I'll avoid my own history with respect to this, but a year ago I could go to the front and I could hang out and you know joke and so forth. Uh, the weather was nice, you know, the food was good kind of a thing. Uh, now you cannot walk during the day or the night because there's a traffic jams of your drones and enemy drones for both sides on top. And it's essentially a death zone. So the ubiquity of drones means, in my view, that tanks and artillery and mortars go away as weapons of war. I'm a sufficient optimist that I believe that once countries figure out a way to make this ubiquitous notion of drones for their own defense, it'll become impossible to invade an adjacent country. Because once the tanks roll, what you could do is just bomb them with drones and a drone costs $5,000 or less and the tank costs $5 million or less. So the kill ratio is such that the, the tanks just don't make it and you can make enough drones to pull it off. Um, the current drones are not particularly AI sophisticated, but if the US government in its infinite stupidity were actually to do something right and approve the Ukraine aid pact, it would give us another another year, right? So to my current phrase publicly is, let's get another year here. And in that year, you're gonna see asymmetric, um, asymmetric innovation that can allow a smaller government, which is a new democracy trying hard to counter the moves of a large and established of, of, of uh, invading power.